So today's lesson we are looking at design briefs and specifications. What you're going to do in this lesson is for the first half you're going to make notes, for the first section around what the keywords and facts are, and then you're going to attempt at the end three exam questions based around the design briefs and specs. So, first of all, what do these words mean? Design spec, user groups and function. So a spec is specific points about your design. You've got user groups, which may inform the spec, and also the function is what the product does. So today's aims, to be able to understand the relationship between design briefs and design specifications, to be able to identify client needs and requirements, to be able to identify the functions of products, and to be able to apply understanding to past paper questions. So what is a design brief? It's a statement of how you are going to solve a design problem. So this usually has within it the information you know, any constraints and limitations. So for example, if it's supposed to be a certain size or something like that, for etc. weight, what a product is, who the target market are. So for example, depending on what product it is, if it's a new PS4 game, the target market for that is usually going to be younger and more aimed at teens, for example. What materials are going to be used and processes of manufacturing? The next bit we're looking at is what a specification is. So a specification is a list of specific requirements your product needs to meet in order to be successful. This is often used to evaluate the final product. Make sure you're getting these down, so pause the video as you're going. Access FM is commonly used as a structure. So how we break that up? We've got aesthetics, cost, customer, environment, size, safety, function, and material. Where does the information for the specification points come from? So this is a pretty much a timeline of how briefs and specs work. So to start with, you have a problem. So we need a problem to design from. So that's stage number one. This is the issue that needs to be solved. Stage two is a design brief. So what a design brief is, is the statement of how you're going to solve the design problem. Then you start to your research. So anything unknown is researched. So what materials might we have on offer? What needs has the clients got? Do we need any features? How do they want it to look? What is the best way to manufacture that product? Then we analyse that research. So what are the main points we can summarise from this research? What are the main things we need that are going to be used to inform our specification? So the main findings are used in the specification and then we use Access FM, like I said before, and we base that on our research findings and then we justify each of these points using the research as a backup statement. So that is essentially the relationship between a design problem, the brief, the research and the spec and how it works. I want you to have a quick go at matching the brief to the spec. So as we've said before, the brief must inform the spec. So the first one we're going to look at, aesthetics. The design must be simple and fit within the previous brand range. Classic colours like blacks, greys and whites should be used with the style of the phone being modern. The phone must be suitable for the market provided and adapt to their needs, e.g. easy to use, clear to see and easy to hold. The cost must be affordable to the consumer and competitive price for the market. As a smartphone must be portable and easy to use in a variety of areas, while at home it must be easy to charge for the customer. Safety no sharp edges, loose parts, must be suitable for adult hand size anthropometrics. Must have the features that make it easy to use, see and comfortable. Must fulfill a smartphone's multiple functions of calling, sending text, using apps. Wireless charging must also be a feature. Okay, so if we look at these, I've obviously flagged that this one is the correct one. The reason why, if we read the others, start from the bottom, tend to make a new smartphone for a new independent company fresh to the market, it must be suitable for 15 and have wireless charging. So that could be something, okay? However, 
it's not talked about things such as classic colours or anything like that. Also, here it's talking about the older target market. So if we relate back that to customer, it must be suitable for market price, easy to use, clear to see and hold. So that one's probably taken out of the equation. I intend to make a smartphone for Apple. It must be suitable for 20 to 30 years old and have face recognition. It's not talked about anything to do with wireless charging. It must be suitable for the older target market and have a large clear screen. So it's got to be this one. I intend to make a new smartphone for Apple. It must be suitable to the older target market and have a wireless charging function. Okay. So clients and branding. So target markets often will buy products because they are trusted slash well-known brand. What is branding on products and what does it look like? So I'm sure you recognize these um, products. We've got Beats, we've got Commerce and the iPhone. So why do companies use branding? Let's take, for example, a classic brand, which is the Mini. Okay, Very popular brand. And what they keep doing is they keep adapting that hatchback design in order to make it change and make it different. Now, people keep coming back to that design because it's established, they like the brand, it's retro, etc. So branding is put on your company's mark on a product to claim it. This can be done using logos, style, packaging, slogans, logos, etc. Client needs now. So what a client or target market needs is often critical for your product success. So products are often adapted to suit different target markets and their needs, as well as some products having multiple functions in order to be appealing and stand out. These are called user groups. These are specific groups of people who have specific needs, elderly, disabled, infants, etc. So within your product, you might have a particular user group that you are aiming your design at. So let's take this for example. So we've got a range of different prams, all of which will be relatable to different user groups. So you might want to pause the video and see if you can figure out what user group is intended for which pram. Okay, so we're going to have a go at this together. First one is obviously a parent in a wheelchair. So we're looking at probably a person who's disabled as the user group. Next one we're looking at disabled child. As you can see, it's higher up, it's supported. It's obviously going to be a lot easier to get that child in and out of that push chair. Next one, twins. So we've got a double cabin two babies, toddler and a newborn, so this integrates in that the toddler and the newborn can both be wheeled about together, it makes it easier for the parent to use, etc. Obviously this is a toy for a child, and then finally if you look at the last one, you can see that it's foldable, so it must be something for a car seat, um, someone who's concerned with space and cost. So the next thing we're going to do is some past paper questions. So I would like you to write these down. And I would like you to attempt them on your own before you watch the video. We're going to break them down together. And then I'm going to show you exactly how you should be answering them. So the method we're going to use is get busy. And it's a way of breaking down that exam question in order for you to make it easy for you to understand. So if you have a command word, we pop a box around it, we underline any keywords, and also how many marks, structure response, and then off you go, attempt to answer it. First one then. Shown below are five key requirements. Do you want each requirement to the correct suggested product feature? One has been done for you. So this is worth four marks, so we've got to match these up um, to the correct ones. So first one, must be easy to clean safely. Silicon feet pads, probably not. Interlocking lid cut out. Detachable jug, removable blade. Now the blade thing there is one that talks to me about safety, so let's have a look if I got that right. Excellent. Must be able to pour the smoothie into the glass. So looking at that, silicon feet pads, probably not. Interlocking lid cut out, mm, detachable jug. 
more like a detachable jug. Must remain stationary when working. Silicon feet pads are interlocking cut out, pretty obvious. It's feet pads, and then finally, must not allow users to touch blades when switched on. So we've got a lid that protects that. We're gonna have a go at our get busy method now. So corporate branding is an important part of the design for consumer electronic products. These are the things I want you to write down um, for this lesson, so I want you to have a go at these questions first. So, give two ways in which the headphone design could incorporate corporate branding, and this is worth two marks, okay? So before we move on, I want you to have a go first, to pause the video, and then we'll come back. <clears throat> so, number one, my first idea was, for many headphone brands, you get branding on the side of the headphones, for example, Apple logo integrated into the polymer casing. So you could put that into the side. Another way in which you could do it could be designed using the colours that represent the brand identity. For example, red indicates Beats by Dre. Okay. Now, that is worth two marks. I've put in some good points, different points, and I've made sure that I've explained it well in regards to my thinking. Okay. Next question, we have two marks again. So we've got give two reasons, we've got to have two, why microwave ovens might be produced in a range of specifications. So let's structure our response on this one. First thing then, not all microwaves are the same. So that might be one reason why we're producing these in different specifications. We can't have one specification from all, because they're all different. Next one, different price ranges. So you can go to Tesco's and buy one for 30 pounds, but there's also some on the market for 200. Are they controlled in different ways? So most um, microwaves are controlled in different ways. Some of them you just turn a dial, other ones you have to program. And another idea that I had is different power ratings. So some of them run off different wattages, which means cooking times will be different for different microwave applications. So my first question, my first answer was, microwaves may have different power ratings related to the watt power of the design. This means cooking times will be changed. So we're gonna to have to have a different specification point relating to that power rating. My second answer, microwaves have a range of different capabilities. For example, some have a grill method, while others are just microwaves. So some microwaves are not all the same. Some of them are controlled in different ways, but they also have different applications into how they're used. So some of them can cook in different ways. Some of them have microwaves, grills, steaming methods, etc. Okay. Have a go then. So we're looking at this part here. These are the mark schemes. So you could have had for the first one, which is the headphone design, could have our corporate branding logos, logo trademark, simple embossed, position of a corporate brand. Headphones could be produced in corporate colours patterns of a company. Could be designed in the style of a company's well-known products. Headphones could be packaged in corporate branded boxes and obvious company styles. Each of those are worth one mark. And the next one, which was the microwaves, different target audiences, cater for commercial and domestic uses, range of capabilities, specifications for different countries, appeal to large target markets, different styles, colours, aesthetics, power ratings, create different products, for different price ranges, different amount of kitchen space for different users. Okay, so that is the mark scheme for that. Add up your marks, see how you've got on. Thanks for listening.